If you want something a little more desirable than your average hatchback, but still dead easy to drive or park, these cars could fit the bill. I wish you to choose between the Audi Q2, the Mini Countryman, or the Volvo V40 Cross Country. Do you know what? This is the first time I'm doing a group test with a Mini when it's been the least Mini of all the cars. I mean, it's, it's huge. To help you decide which of these three is best for you, I'm going to critique their designs. It's a Mini! Honestly! Inspect their cabins. It's a little bit like being in a rave. See how practical they are. What are you going to tell me next? That the world isn't round? And test what they like to drive. That does make it a bit of a laugh. But first, let's talk money. Now pay attention because this is the numbers, but it might get a bit confusing. So the Audi Q2 range starts from around £20,000. The Mini Countryman starts from around £22,500. And the Volvo V40 Cross Country, well, that starts from just over £23,500. But the cars, as tested, this D4 2 litre diesel automatic, it's around £30,000. It's got about 800 quid's worth of options on it. The Audi, that's a 1.4 litre turbo petrol S line, and that's £34,000 because it's got seven grand's worth of options on it. This is the Mini Cooper S, so it's got a two litre turbocharged petrol engine. It's got all wheel drive, and this one's got the automatic gearbox. The one I have here is £36,000, and that's because it's got an incredible 10 grand's worth of options on it, which is a little bit insane. However, what really matters is the price you pay at a dealership. Now, if you click up there to go to carwire.co.uk, you can compare offers and buy at a price you're confident in. So the Mini has the biggest price tag, and it isn't just the numbers which are large. It's a Mini, honestly. Look, it's tiny, not. The Countryman is a little jumped up for a Mini. Also, Cooper S versions like this are slightly over-accessorised jewellery. But then the Audi is also trying hard to stand out. There's loads of design shenanigans going on with this car. So at the front, there's plenty of plastic trim about the place. You've got all these creases down the side. Then you've got those side blades, which are a bit like those on an Audi R8. And at the back, it's kind of a bit like a jacked up VW Polo. Compared to the other two, the V40 Cross Country is more subtle, though it still has some unique features. So Volvo have taken the elegant V40 and they fitted some body cladding and jacked up the suspension by about 40 millimetres and that's effectively changed its posture from this to this, giving it more presence. Despite this, the Volvo focuses more on comfort than sportiness and that theme continues on the inside. The Volvo definitely has the comfiest seats. They're absolutely lovely to sit in. And on the whole, the interior design is pretty nice, though a bit like me, it's starting to show its age. It doesn't really appreciate being filmed in 4K. It shows the board, the wrinkles. Actually, can we go for some soft focus, please? Both me and the car. Thanks. There's a touch of the low definition about the V40's infotainment display too. Also, the control buttons are mounted on the dash and this makes it a bit awkward to operate. Still, you can get some digital driving dials, However, they pale in comparison to those of Audi's virtual cockpit. But then that option doesn't come cheap. To get it, you need to specify the upgraded infotainment system first, though that is rather lovely and easy to use via the wheeled controller. But what about the rest of the Q2's cabin? Audi is a master of car interiors and this Q2 is proof. So it's stylish, but it's not overly showy. Well, apart from the LEDs encrusted into certain panels, which you can change the colors of. It's a little bit like being in a rave. Actually, it's not like being in a rave. It's like being sat in a car with variable LEDs. The Countryman, on the other hand, doesn't mess about. Its colourful interior is the one which stands out the most. Even if it didn't say Mini right there in front of me, I would still be no doubt about which brand of car I was sat in. It's just so unique. It's, yeah, okay, it's a little bit chintzy, but it's got character and character matters. It's kind of cool. There's various colours for the infotainment graphics, which all have a cutesy, cartoony mini theme to them. However, the system isn't childish. It's based on BMW's excellent iDrive, as BMW owns Mini. However, it is child's play to use, especially as you can operate it via the touchscreen or a rotary controller. The Mini also has plenty of cubby spaces, and there's loads of space for your luggage too. It's got the biggest boot of the three cars here, and with the seats folded, you can fit in all this stuff. It really is quite practical, especially for something that's called Mini. The base not only big, it's got some useful features such as a little storage area there, some elasticated straps, tethering points, 12 volt socket, you've also got a false floor and if you want to sit like this in the car you can spend just over £100 to get this special little bench seat there for the tailgate. That's, that's kind of comfy. 
And that brings us on to the Volvo, which is only kinda practical. In-car storage is just about adequate, and the boot is the smallest here by quite some margin, with the seats up or down. Plus, it's the most awkward to load. I've got a little confession to make to you guys. Um, you see this down here, There's some scratches in the, in the bodywork. And I did that when I was loading a bike into the car to film the practicality video. Now I haven't done that on any car before this one. It's because the opening is quite small and the load lip is quite high. So yeah, I'm blaming the car. In fact, the boot itself isn't that large and it's not very practical. And I thought Volvos were supposed to be practical. What are you going to tell me next? That the world isn't round? When it comes to doing damage to your wallet though, Volvo has nothing on Audi. If you're on an electric tailgate on the Audi Q2, it's a £450 extra, which is more than the Minis. And tell you the truth, I wouldn't bother, I'll just lift it myself. The boot itself with the seats in place is actually a decent enough size, and there's not much of a load lip, and there's various features and stuff. The only thing it's really lacking is a 12 volt socket. The Q2 is a fairly practical car. You can't quite squeeze as much into it as you can the Mini, but there's not much difference to really matter. What's more, in-car storage is plentiful and useful. But what's the Q2 like for carrying people? It's not exactly massive here in the back of the Q2, but there is sufficient space for adults so long as you aren't over six foot tall. One problem I do have, though, is that there's no quarter lights. You've got this big pillar at the back. That reduces the amount of light that comes into the cabin. And when you combine that with a dark interior, it can feel a bit dark and dingy back here if you turn out the light. Actually, that was a bit of a lie. Like a man sat there with a light and he kind of moved that off me when I pressed that button. But trust me, it is dark in the back. See? Fitting a baby seat is fairly painless due to the raised seating position. In the Volvo, it's slightly trickier though, as the doors don't open quite as wide and the Isofix fittings are a bit fiddly. Volvo has tried to do something a little bit clever with this car's rear seat. So what they've done is move the outer ones in slightly so that when you're sitting in the back, your view isn't fully obstructed by the headrest. You get to see out the windscreen. Now, kids will like that. Adults won't like the fact that, well, headroom is really tight. People over 6'4 are going to struggle in the back of this car. There's no such complaints with the Mini though. It's definitely the easiest to install a child seat in. In fact, it's the roomiest in the back too. This is actually the only Mini that is any good for families and it's surprisingly good for them actually because look, I mean, look how much room I've got here in the back. Adults will be fine in the rear of this car and you can get it with seats which slide and recline for an extra £300. Money well spent, I'd say. And speaking of spending money, these cars cost a little extra than normal hatchbacks due to their jacked up rugged looks. But are they all show? No go. To find out, I'm going to have a little challenge to see which is the best at scaling a steep hill. So I'm going to start with the Volvo. Now you can only get the T5 petrol, the range stopping car, with all wheel drive. The rest of them are only available with front wheel drive, even all the diesels. Now I'm going to approach this very slowly because I know this car has the least ground clearance so I can't drive quickly up the ramp. I need to get it pointing upwards, then try and go up it. Come on. Come on. No, lost it, lost it, lost it. That's it, sliding back down. OK, that kind of got halfway up. Let's go try another car. OK, so now I'm in the Audi. This particular 1.4 petrol does not have all-wheel drive. You can only get it with a 2-litre diesel or 2-litre petrol. So a bit more choice in the Volvo. Also, I've got more ground clearance than in the Volvo, so I can give this car a bit of a run-up to help me along. See how far I get up. Oh, almost! Oh, not quite. Lost it at the very top. Almost did it. Close, but no cigar. OK, then finally, we come to the Mini. Now, all Countrymans are available with all-wheel drive. In fact, the two-litre petrols come with it as standard. You don't get them with two-wheel drive at all. So we've got decent ground clearance, so I could have a run-up, but I want to see the effect of that all-wheel drive system. So I'm just going to crawl up to this hill and then just see if I can power up it. Well, there we go. <laughs> I think that shows you the benefit of all-wheel drive. If you need it, it does its job. That was relatively easy. OK, so very few people are going to do that kind of driving in these cars. How they perform on the road is really what matters most. Now, the first thing you notice about the Mini is that it does feel sport. It's what you'd expect from a Mini. The downside is, is that the suspension is a bit on the firm side. Too firm for some people. I actually think it's OK. The steering is pretty lively as well. It does turn in pretty sharply, this car. That does make it a bit of a laugh. What's not so amusing, though, is the noise that you get from those tyres. Oh, 
it's annoying <laughs> on a long journey and you do get quite a bit of wind noise as well and then there's the engines they're all right but i don't think they're the best here i mean this two litre turbo petrol in this cooper s it doesn't feel as fast as you think it's gonna. Another flaw is the fuel economy. I only manage 31 miles per gallon in this Mini Cooper S, and that's a bit poor. Now, jumping from the Mini into this Volvo, instantly you realize this car is not sporty in any way, shape, or form. It's, it's not set up to do that. It is more comfortable, though. It, it's just more relaxing over bumps. It's also slightly quieter to travel in. You don't get quite so much wind whistle nor tire roar, but, it's not as much fun to drive. It doesn't have quite the character of the Mini. Still, the engine in this car, the D4, is really, really strong. It gives good performance, but it does make a bit of a noise. And I think the engines and the gearboxes in the Volvo are probably the weakest here. The Volvo averaged a decent enough 43 miles per gallon, though the Audi wasn't far off with 38 miles per gallon, and it's a petrol. For me, this Audi strikes the best balance between the comfort of the Volvo and the sportiness of the Mini. It's a really nice midpoint. It goes around corners well enough. You can feel what it's doing. It, yeah, it still manages to be comfortable. It goes over bumps well. It's quiet as well. I think the Audi has the best engine range as well. And the one in this car, the 1.4 litre turbo petrol is an absolute peach. Gives decent economy and good performance. So then where does all that leave us? Well, the Volvo is stylish and with the car wow discount, good value for money. Just a shame it's not more practical nor more fun. Whereas the Mini is fun and it's practical. It's just a shame about the firm ride and the questionable looks. And that brings us onto the Audi Q2. You know, it's got enough style, it's got enough space, it's got enough tech and it's good to drive. It is the best all rounder and that's why the Q2 wins this test. Please like, share and comment on this video and click on the logo to subscribe. Also, click on the video windows to watch each of the detailed reviews of the cars in this test.